and welcome back to Dusty Book Sniffers. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here for my book haul. Yes, I've done it again. <laughs> I need help. All right, so let's get into it. Well, good morning or good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking some time out of your day and clicking on this video to see what it's all about and see the craziness that is me of my book purchasing. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that. We're not here to shame anybody. You can buy as many books as you like. All right, so I have a couple of book, re uh, book group reads coming up on my Discord, and you can find all that information down below. Just click on the link and come over and join. Um, this, well, I decided that I was going to put a, together a list of books. Now, we do have our Wheel of Time series happening, our uh, Robin and Hobb um, Robathon, <laughs> Robin Hobb a thon, uh, sort of going because we're reading all the books in, in in her series and the Wheel of Time we're also plowing, plugging through that as well and so you can join them at any time but we also have monthly reads as well which is a sort of a book club style um, it's still finding its legs and everything like that so we'd love you to come over and join and join in the discussion with us now um, I got to thinking that around the time that I was thinking this we were looking at um, the women's prize for fiction award was about to be announced now at the time that I put it together I basically put the shortlist as a monthly reads because a lot of people that I had spoken to hadn't actually heard of the books or hadn't read them or hadn't even looked at the prize to see what books were nominated or anything like that so I decided that I was going to put the the shortlist in as our monthly reads and then obviously we started with the winner um, so either the books are just going to be awesome all across the board or they're going to go downhill from this. We don't know how it's going to go. I've heard many good things about the books that I have put on. And as I said, it's the short, I believe it's every one that was on the shortlist. Well, the ones that appealed a little bit to me as well. So the first one that we started with, and this is doing a little bit of a backtrack, backtrack was Ruth Ozeki's, um The Book of Form and Emptiness. Now this book here, I didn't know anything about Ruth Ozeki. I hadn't even heard of her as an author. I know, where have I been? Under a rock, obviously. But um, I am very keen to read more of her work. And apparently the, the word around town is that this isn't even her best work. So I'm super excited to get into more of hers. We've already read this. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I do have a separate video um, and which has already gone up so you can go and check that out I will cut it up below, uh, up the top here and I'll also put it down below so you can have a look at that as well um, if you can't find the card but a brilliant book is all I'm going to say if you haven't read it you really should read it uh, read it and um, basically if you want to know what it's about and my take on the book um by all means go and watch that video and if you want to see what other people think about it and you don't necessarily want to read the book you can always come over to our discord and just look for the um july 2022 and all the thoughts and and whatnot are in there so definitely a good read all right the next ones i know nothing about i haven't really looked i just sort of i've i've heard, actually one of them i've heard a lot of good things actually two of them i've heard a lot of good things about the other ones i haven't really um looked into i sort of semi know what they're about um but i try and so a lot of the time i'll read something or i'll hear something about a book and it's gone from my mind in like 10 minutes i wouldn't even be able to tell you i'll remember the cover like the visual of it and stuff like that so the two books that i have heard about and as I said, these are all over the Discord and um, you'll be able to go over there and see where they are. So Sorrow and Bliss is one by um, Meg Mason. Yep, Mason. And so that was on the shortlist and it's obviously it's it's got the little sticker on the bottom. Um, so that was on the shortlist. Now I have seen, I haven't gone and watched any videos, but I have seen a lot of people have... Um, talked about this on their their channel so i'm looking forward to to reading um this one so i'll have a bit of a read now and basically it just says everyone tells uh, martha frill she is clever beautiful and br a brilliant brilliant writer who has um been loved every day of her adult life by one man her husband patrick so why is everything broken maybe martha is just someone who finds it harder to be alive than most people people or maybe as she has long believed there is something wrong with her and so obviously it's a, a got, going to be touching a little bit on mental health and stuff like that so that is very interesting 
The next one I heard a bit about, and I seen this. Um, this won the 2021 Booker Prize, and um, it was also um, on. I think this was on the long list, not the short list. I can't remember. Um, I'll put it down below if it was on the short list because it doesn't have a sticker on it, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think this was on the long list, but this story actually intrigued me. Now I did see this, and I seen this by mistake, and this was over on Savage Reads, and this one is. Um, this one, it was, as I said, was a Booker Prize winner for 2021. It's also been on the um, bestsellers list, the New York Times bestseller list. And uh, this is a historical fiction, and it's from the night she is re rescued as a baby out of the flames of a sinking ship to the day that she joins a pair of daredevil pilots looping and diving over the rugged forests of her childhood to, thrill, um, to the thrill of flying Spitfires during the war uh, the, the life of Marion Grace has been marked by lust for freedom and danger. In 1950, she, she embarks on the li her life's dreams to fly the great circle around the globe. But after a crash landing, she finds herself stranded in the Ant Antarctic um, ice without enough fuel. With a fearsome stretch of water separating her from her goal, she writes one last entry in her logbook. She is ready for her final journey. Half a century later, Hadley Baxter, a brilliant troubled Hollywood starlet, is irresistibly drawn to, the pl to play Marion Greaves, a role that will lead her to probe the deepest mysteries of the vanished pilot's life. And, in, and basically it goes on to say an enthralling journey over oceans, continents and the drama etc etc the great circle so i'm really looking forward to reading this one i think it's just got a lot of intrigue in it and to have the parallel so you've got the the actual the, the like the pilot that's written her last log and and all that sort of stuff and obviously she's you know ready for her final journey and then you know half 50 years later you've got this Hollywood starlet that's going to play this woman in a movie or a play or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's, it's basically, it's very intriguing to me. So this is another one that we've got. Um, as I said, I can't remember when the, the months are, I think this is actually December that we're, they're re reading this one, but the great circle, I'm really intrigued to read that one. All right. These ones I have no idea about. Um, I sort of have an idea that this one has a little bit of domestic violence in it. Um, and basically it is just, yeah, it, it was shortlisted as well. And it's The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agonosti. And basically um, it is about Athalia Lopez and she's about to turn 40. She's fashionable, feisty. Um, fiercely independent she manages a boutique in the port of Spain but behind closed doors she's covering up bruises from her abusive partner and seeking solace in, affair with, in an affair with her boss so it's got a little bit of everything in it not a too big a book so I'm really looking forward to and this one I actually also have um, I found it on Scribe so I will do immersive reading with this one um, and hopefully I will sit it in, do it in one sitting because it only has 244 pages so it's a pretty quick book for me um, but again this is another group read okay so this one I don't know anything about this one is the island of missing trees and I believe this one is told in the perspective of the tree and basically it's set in 1974 it was as I said it was shortlisted it's um, most of these are, have been shortlisted or at least on the long list it's by penguin books um, it is uh, as I said set in 1974 and uh, two teenagers from opposite sides of the divided uh, Cyprus meet at a tavern in the city they both call home. The tavern is the only place that Katakis, who is Greek, and um, Defnan, who is Turkish, can meet in secret, hidden beneath the leaves of a fig tree growing in through the roof of the tavern. The tree will witness their, their hushed happy meetings and will be there when the war breaks out and the teenagers vanish. Ooh. So a bit of mystery, 
Um, but told him the point of the, the tree, I thought was a little bit intriguing. That's all I really know about it. So I'm, again, I'm really looking forward to reading all of these books. The next one is by Lou, um, Louise Edrich, and it's called The Sent uh, Sentence, and I absolutely know nothing about it. Um, I know that it was on, I'm pretty sure this was on the long list, maybe even the short list. If it was on the short list, I will just put it down below. Um, this is a wickedly funny ghost story, a tale of passion and complex marriage of... Uh, and of a woman's relentless errors. Louise Edridge's latest novel, The Sentence, asks what we owe to the living, the dead, to the reader and to the book. A small independent bookstore in Minneapolis is haunted from November 2019 to November 2020 by most of by its most annoying customer, Flora. Flora dies on All Souls Day, but she simply won't leave the store. That sounds really funny. <laughs> I like a good ghost story, so that was another re like a, a reason that I picked it because I did I did hear that it was um, a haunted uh, bookstore. So that's going to be very interesting. Um, and this one, other than that, I don't know anything about it. And um, this one has uh, three hundred and eighty one pages in it, so not a short book. But so you can see sort of the theme from my. Um, from my updates for the the monthly wrap up and whatnot you can see that I do gravitate towards the 400 mark a little bit so they're always just generally over 300. All right so in the last day of July I went shopping with my husband and we went to this shop that we have and it's um, in King Arroy and it's like a, a cheap shop so they have cheap furniture, they have cheap groceries, they have cheap appliances and all that sort of stuff. They also from time to time get cheap books in and so I was there and I was only there to go and get some dog food, uh, not sorry cat food but we get them dog food because they don't like fish they do, and so and it's really hard to get cat food um on a regular basis that don't have um the fish in here with all the shortages and and whatnot and we're in a small country town so we're not a priority the city's a priority so basically um yeah so this cheap shop has cheap dog food down there and so we've been going down to get it well when I walked in they had a big table of books for two dollars so I went rummaging through them I didn't look at the blurbs I these were all picked by the covers all of them picked by the covers um except for one I I recognized the the last name and when I came I picked it up and when I came home I realized that it was actually from one of my uh one of the authors that I really Australian authors that I really like and she's related to her so uh from what I can tell these are um mysteries or thrillers and uh just by the covers by the little blurbs that are on the front cover I haven't read the blurbs on the back so and these were all two dollars okay uh, so this, I'll start with the first one that I've seen that I recognise the um, name, and I've talked about this on the channel. This was in my TBR video. Um, so this is Jacqueline Moriarty, and Jacqueline Moriarty is the youngest sister of um, Leanne Moriarty. So some of you may know Leanne Moriarty from uh, the Apple Never Falls, uh, Nine Perfect Strangers, and little lies I think is the other one which I haven't read those two books so I've only read one of um Leanne Moriarty's and I've listened to part of other ones and I really like her story so she I, I can't say that definitively that she is my favorite author but I see I figured I'd give her her sister a go now Jacqueline Moriarty has actually written um some YA books as well and I believe she only has this is a adult um, story and I believe she only has um, one other adult and the rest of her books are either children's or YA um, so she's got in the, yeah so she's got one other one and it is called I, I have a bed made of buttermilk pancakes and that is under the the adult in the front of the book and you can pause the camera here and that's the list of her YA books Okay, so two dollars. So originally, and I think I may have even said this in my TBR, I sheepishly went up to the counter because on the back of it it had thirty two ninety nine, and I sheepishly went up to the counter and went, "Is this book two dollars?" <laughs> and he goes, "All our books are two dollars." I'm like, "Even if it has thirty two ninety nine on the back," he goes, "Even if it has thirty two ninety nine on the back." So basically, I picked it up for two bucks, and I'm I'm hopefully have read this by um 
by the end of August. It is on my TBR. It was a last minute addition to my TBR. So, um, but I also have this on, uh, I found it on Scriver on audio. So I'm going to do a little bit of immersive reading in this one. So if you haven't seen this one in my TBR, this is following the story of Abigail Sorensen and she has spent her life trying to unwrap the events of 1990. In that year, she started to receive um, pages from a, a self-help book called The Guidebook um, and they were coming in the post. And the same year on the eve of her 16th birthday, her brother disappeared. And now she's 35 years old. She's an owner, a business owner. She has a young child of four years old and um, she's been invited to learn the truth behind the, the self-help book and um, at an all expenses paid retreat. And basically it goes on to say what she finds will be unexpected, life-affirming and heartbreaking all at the same time. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading that one. I mean, $2, you can't go wrong. If that turns out to be a really good book and a really good author, like $2, oh, I've scored. All right, the next one is called um, An Anonymous Girl. She's Lying to lying to Know the Truth and it is by Greera Hendricks and um, Sarah Pekinenen. I don't know how to pronounce that. And so basically, um, that's what the cover looks like. And this is from, from the top 10 best-selling authors of The Wife Between Us. Okay. All right. So as I said, I don't know anything about it. Um, I'm, it's basically, I'll just read the short blurbs that we've got because I will go into depth of re like once I've read these, but this all right. One, so this one is seeking women. It's got on the back seeking women aged 18 to 32 to participate in a study on ethics and morality. Um, generous compensation, anonymity, anonymity is guaranteed. So when Jessica signs up for this, uh, psychology study, she uh, by a mysterious Dr. Shield. She thinks all she'll have to do is answer a few questions, collect her money and leave. But as the questions grow more and more intense and invasive and the sessions become outings where Jess is told that she has to wear or act or begin act a certain way, she begins to feel as though Dr. Shields may um, may know what she is thinking and what she is hiding as Jessie's paranoia grows it becomes clear that she can no longer trust what the re what is really in her life and what is not and what one one of Dr Shields manipul manipulative experiments caught in a web of deceit and jealousy Jessie Jess quickly learns that she that some obsessions can become deadly so this has actually got a clever a thriller with a masterful twist that was by Karen Slaughter. Fans of Gone Girl and Go Girl on a Train adore this classic domestic no noir set in New York by Sunday Express and a fiendishly smart cat and mouse thriller. So couldn't go past that. Two bucks. Like, but as I said, I picked it from that and I read this bit here. I didn't read what this was about. So though, uh, that's what I tend to do when I pick up a book. Like a lot of them have them on the front. And she's lying to know the truth. Like that, that's that's pretty intense in that one right there. The next one is the from the bestseller author of uh, A Guide to Dying is Deborah Adelaide, and it's called Zebra and Other Stories. So I assume that this was a collection of short stories. Um, so yeah, and again, this was um, purely. I just like the cover. I thought it was very cute. And um, so yeah, so zebra and other stories. A body is buried in a suburban backyard. A suicide pack wor um, worthy of a ch of check off. A love affair born in a bookshop. The last days of uh, Benelong, and a very strange gift for the most unusual prime minister. Um, tantalizing, poignant, wry, and just a little fantastical. A, this submersive collection of short fiction and other singular novellas, best-selling author Deborah Adelaide reminds us what twists of fate may be lurking beneath the surface of every day. Now, as you know, I I did not know that this was short, short stories because I failed to read and other stories until five seconds ago. So, um, yeah, so basically I'm pretty happy with that because as you know, and I've talked about on this channel before, I am trying to build up my collection of short stories. Now I know a lot of people don't like short stories and they find them, you know, they're, they're not 
great in some aspects and I do find stories like that that aren't the best either they just don't gel with me but I like to have short stories when I in the car or in my handbag like this is probably a little bit big to carry around in my handbag so it'll just sit in the car so if I'm sitting there waiting for Nero Lee to finish work I can read a, a short story and you know I don't read these in a month I don't generally add them into a TBR unless they're part of a challenge so they will just be there and then when I finish them I'll talk about them but the back of it makes these stories sound pretty good. Um, I don't think I've read anything from Deborah Adelaide from memory. I don't think I have. Um, I'd have to go and have a look on my bookshelf because, and also Savannah's bookshelf because sometimes I can forget that I've read an author. But I, the name, Adelaide, the last name rings a bell, but I don't know if I've actually, maybe I've seen a book on Savannah's shelf. So that I got that one. Two bucks. Can't go wrong. This one here is Rage Before Beauty, Perfect Ten, Jacqueline Ward, Hugely Engrossing and a Dark Delight. by, um, And that was written by Catherine Ray Howard, The Little Burb. Um, an explosive debut, um, debut thriller about one woman's search for revenge and the dangerous chain of events she sets in motion. So another thriller. It's um, quite a in your face um like it stood out it was under a pile of books and i could see the pink and it stood out to me so i thought i'd grab that um two bucks and it was originally 12.99 pounds so yeah um but it looks like it's going to be you know if those little blurbs are anything to go by and a lot of the time those blurbs do not let me down and it's also a debut novel which i like to read debut novels in thrillers because it, it really sets the tone for the author's writing and all of that sort of stuff um and i've I, I come across a really good one a couple of months ago through kindle unlimited and i can't wait till his second book comes out because i'm I really want to read it um, and I'll yeah I won't go into detail now because this video is already long enough because you know I can't help myself but shop all the time all right so this one here I absolutely love this cover I'm not a fan of green but this cover just it just relaxes me and the picture of the girl on it just ah. <laughs> have you ever looked at a book and just gone Oh, I need to have that book. <laughs> well, that's what I've done with this one. And again, $2, can't go wrong. So this is by Laura Elizabeth Woolett, and it's called Beautiful Revolutionary. And all it said on the front was utterly intoxicating. Uh, Woolett is electric. It is published by Scribe, um, by Scribe, sorry. And basically it's saying that she's got an immense talent. So this is a thrilling new novel inspired by the events of Jonestown in 1970. I have no idea what that is about. In the summer of 1968, Eve uh, Evelyn Linden is a woman at war with herself. A minister's daughter, an atheist, independent woman, frustrated wife, bitch with a bleeding heart. <laughs> I did not read this. <laughs> um, following her <laughs> conscience. <laughs> uh, following her conscientious objector husband um, Lenny to the rural Eden of Evergreen Valley, California, Eve Evelyn wants to be happy with their new life, yet she finds herself disillusioned with uh, Lenny's passive ways um, and, and anxious for a saviour. Enter, oh, so it's a bit of a romance as well, enter the Reverend Jim Jones, uh, the dynamic, or maybe it's not. <laughs> I don't know anyway the reverend oh i'm messing this up big time you're just getting it out it is people uh, enter reverend jim jones um the dynamic leader of the new revolutionary church meticulously researched and masterfully masterfully written beautiful re revolutionary explores the allure of real life charismatic leader who would destroy so many it follows evelyn as she is pulled into jones jones's orbit an orbit that would prove to be impossible for her to leave wow okay so it is actually based on some real life events i don't know anything about the jonestown um events and so yeah in the 70s so that'll be really interesting so it sounds like a little bit of a cultish type book and i like that sort of thing i'm very intrigued by people that get pulled into people's webs because i've like I've been sucked into it. Like I'm not saying that I've never been sucked into stuff, but I think I get pulled, like I like reading about these books because I like the psychological thing behind it. And, you know, like there's so many people that get pulled into these webs and I'm very intrigued to know why. I've got another book on my bookshelf that I really want to read and I keep putting it off. And it's a memoir about a girl that um, she actually gets involved with the Bhagwan 
um, and in the 80s and they, they were commonly known as the orange people because they all wore orange robes and stuff like that um, and I had a cousin that joined the the um, that and so I really want to read that, what this is about and and um, yeah so this one even more intriguing so this one's got uh, just over 400 pages uh, yeah 404 pages so not a not a short book but not a long book either and as I said that cover just made me feel so relaxed I want to read it and the print in it's pretty good like all the print is decent size like you know you can get some of those cheap books and they're just really terrible um font and all that sort of stuff but this is really really good and the looks like it's in parts too like book two and it's broken up like that but that is all of my haul that I have purchased and uh, so you'll have to keep an eye out for when I read those and I get to those. As I said, the first lot that I showed you, all the shortlisted ones, they are going to be over the next few months. I've got right up until December. So if you want to come and join our Discord, by all means, come and join our Discord. We'd love to have you over there participating in the um, in the discussion. All right, that is it from me today. I'd just like to say thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me. Make sure you hit that like button and if you've yet to subscribe, if you're a returning viewer or even if you're new and you've yet to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button and help me get to my thousand subscribers. That's all helping me get there and I will see you all again next time. Bye for now.